Today I'm going to show you a brand new array class that will simplify using arrays in VBA. You can download the array class with lots of practical examples from the description below the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's first of all look at why we use arrays in VBA. Imagine we have data like this and we want to read through this data. We do this using a range. We type dim rg as range. We set the range equal to the worksheet data and then range a1 and we then get the current region which gives us the adjacent data back. Then we read through this data very easily. We type dim i as long and for i equals 1 to the number of rows in the range which is range.rows.count. If we want to access any of the items in that range we use the cells property of range. i is always the current row in the loop and we say to as the column we want to read from is the fruit names. When we run the code you can see that it printed out all the fruit names to the immediate window. This is a simple example of using the range to read data. The range has a lot of functionality. We can easily get a row or get a column, insert rows, remove rows, etc. For example, we can get row 5 using the rows property of range. In this example, we will print the address of row 5 to the immediate window. We simply use the rows property and pass 5 as the row we want to retrieve. When we run the code, you can see that it printed out the address of row 5, which is A5 to C5. We have seen that ranges are very easy to use and flexible. However, reading to and from ranges causes VBA code to run really slow. This is why we use arrays because they work much faster. Let's change this code so it now uses an array. The first thing we do is change the variable type to be a variant. When we assign this to the value of a range, VBA will automatically convert it to an array and fill it with all the data from the range, which is incredibly useful. We then read through the array. We use L bound and U bound with one as the second parameter to get us the first and last rows of the array. To access the current item, we remove cells and we change it to array. Let's run the code. You can see that it printed out the results the same as in our previous example. However, this code will run much faster than the original code that used ranges. Arrays seem great, but the problem with them is that they have no inbuilt functionality. If you want to retrieve, insert, or filter a row, then you have to write the code to do it yourself. Now we're going to use our new array class and see how useful it is. To use the new array, simply download the files from the description below this video. Then when you have the files, you can just simply drop them into any workbook that you want to use them in. We'll be writing the results of our code to columns E, F, and G. To use the array class, we declare our variables as new CLS array 2D. We use the data property of our array class and assign it to the data. So it's already quite similar to using an array. Now when we want to write out the values, we simply say array.writeData to range. With the write data to range sub, we only have to supply the starting cell and it will automatically resize the range so that the array fits. When we run the code, you can see that it wrote out everything, including the header. This is because current region gives us back all the data plus the header. We can easily remove the header from the data by using the data from range member. The first parameter of data from range takes a range as parameter, so we must not forget to remove value. The second parameter of data from range is remove header. If we set this to true, it will remove the header from the data. The third parameter allows us to set the size of the header if it's bigger than one row. When we run the code, you can see we no longer have the header as part of the data. Now this is a very simple example. Let's do something a bit more interesting. Imagine we want to read row 5, like we did in previous examples. We can do this very easily. We type new row as new CLS array 2, and this is where the new row will be stored. We'll set the row to be new row dot data and to get the row we simply use the get rows function of the array class and we give this the number of the row that we want to retrieve. Now we write out the row to the range using its write data to range member function and when we run the code you can see that it wrote the row to the worksheet. We can actually specify the number of rows so we can say from row 5 I want the next four rows. 
Then we run the code again, you can see that it wrote out 5, 6, 7 and 8 rows. It is useful to get the row if we want to manipulate the row's data, but sometimes we just want to write the row directly from the array to the worksheet. Well, we can do that too, and we do that using write rows to range. This is very similar to write data to range, except in this case we're specifying the rows that we want to write. We will write 5 rows starting at row 2. We run the code and you can see it wrote out rows 2 to 6. Sometimes we want to transpose our data. In other words, we want the data so the rows are written as columns and the columns are written as rows. To do this, we simply set the transpose parameter to true. When we run the code, you can now see that it wrote out our rows as columns. In this video, I'm focused primarily on rows, but anything we do with rows, we can do with columns as well. So for example, here we change write rows to range to write columns to range. And then we set the values 1 and 2. When we run the code, you can see that it's inserted two columns starting at column 1. Now if we want to transpose, just like with the rows, we set transpose to true. And then when you look and run the code, you can see that it's transposed the columns. So anywhere you see rows, in this video, you can substitute for columns and it will do the same job with columns. Let's now look at inserting rows into an array. The way we do it in our array is we simply do array dot insert rows blank. We specify the row position where we want to insert the blank rows and the number of rows that we wish to insert. We're going to insert a row at four and the number of rows we want to insert is going to be two. We run the code and you can see that two blank rows have been inserted before row 4. Let's try another example. This time we're going to insert before row 9 and I'm going to insert 5 rows. We run the code and you can see where the blank rows were inserted. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is how we can insert an actual array of one or more rows. So if you look at the two rows we have here in row 15 and 16 of the worksheet, we want to insert these rows before position 6 in our array. So how can we do it? We simply use the insert rows method. It takes two parameters, the row position to insert and the array to insert at that position. We set 6 as the row we want to insert and then we add the range as the second parameter. But we use the dot value property of the range which converts it to a two dimensional array. We run the code and we can see that mango and banana appeared in position 6 in our array. So now we're going to look at remove rows. So remove rows works very much like insert blank rows in that we pick the row to start from and we pick the number of rows. So we're going to start at row 4 and we're going to remove 5 rows. When we run the code you'll see it's removed the rows from 4 to 8. Now let's remove the last two rows. So to do this we select 9 as the row to start from and we select 2 as the number of rows. And when we ran the code you can see the last two rows were removed. Now let's remove the first five rows. We start at one and we select five. And you can see the first five rows have been removed. So that's how we use the remove rows method. A very useful array ability is the ability to easily search for an item. We use the index of method of the array class to do this. The first parameter is the item to search for, which is a string. The rest of the parameters are optional. The second parameter is the column to search for, and one is the default. But we're going to use column two because that's where our fruit is. The index of method returns us the row number. So let's create our variable for the row. We say row equals index of. And then we can write out the row like we did before. We use the right rows to range method. And what we simply specify then is the row that we get back from index of. We run our code, you can see that orange was written to the worksheet. This means that index of found orange and gave us the row number. The third parameter of index of is starting position, which has a default of one. So this is the row to start searching from. If we set the start position to four, and then we run the code, you'll see that it now finds orange in row seven because it started searching from row 4. Parameter 4 allows us to turn off or on case sensitivity. The default is not case sensitive, that is VB text compare. Let's search for the fruit pear. 
it returns the first pair regardless of the case. So you can see we got the one with capital letters. Now let's use VB binary compare. When we run our code, you will see that it ignored the one with capital letters and brought us back pair with the matching case. With index of, we can only do very basic matching. If we want to do more advanced comparison, then we can use the index by function, which places no limits on how we can search. Before we look at this, let's take a look at the filter method, which works in a very similar way to index of, and then we look at both index by function and filter by function. So now we're going to look at filter. The only difference between filter and index of is that filter returns all the rows as an array, whereas index of just returns the row. But other than that, the parameters are the same. So we create a new CLS class array 2D, which is going to hold our results. And so we sign it to the data of this CLS array class. And we're going to use just write to range. So the filtered rows we want to write to range, and this will write out all of the data in our filtered rows. So we run this code, and you see we got back all the pair based on the criteria. So starting at position four and comparing on case. Now, if we remove all those extra parameters and then we run it, we will get back all the pairs, as you can see. The index of and filter functions are both quite limited in what we can match on. So that's why I created the ability to use a compare function with both of them. So let's have a look at that now. Imagine we want to perform a more complex filter. For example, we want to return all rows with apples or oranges. How do we do it? We can use the filter by function and this allows us to create a powerful custom filter. The filter by function takes a class module of type iCompare function. So we create a class that's based on iCompare function. In other words, it implements iCompare function. And then we create our custom compare function in this new class. Now, if you think this is all a bit complicated, don't worry. I'm going to show you a very simple way to do it all a bit later. So let's create our filter for selecting apples and oranges. We insert a new class module. We'll call this one CLS compare apple. We use implements an I compare function. This means the class must have a compare function with the same name and parameters as the one in I compare function. And put I compare function before it. If you would like to know more about implements, then check out my video on class interfaces. Now again, don't worry if this all seems a bit much. I'm going to show you a much easier way to do this in a few moments. If the compare function returns true, then the current row will be included in the filtered records. If the compare function returns false, then the row will not be included. We set the return value to false by setting the function name to false. Then we use an if statement to check our criteria. Using data and row together gives us access to the current row, and we can select any column by using the column number as the second parameter. Let's add a simple condition. So does the current row contain apple or does it contain orange? And if it does, we want it to be returned in our filter. So we'll set the return value to true. So that's our simple function created. So how do we use it? Well, let's go back to our code and take a look. We've got a filter by function here. And what we do is we declare compare function as new CLS compare apple. And then we pass the compare function as a parameter. That's all we've got to do. Let's run the code. And now you can see that it returned all the apples and oranges. So in other words, it followed our criteria. Now, as promised, I'm going to show you a simple way to create a compare function. So let's say we want to return all the fruit that starts with P and that have sales less than 50. We first of all insert a new class module. And let's call this one CLS compare start P. Now we simply go to an existing one, say compare apple, for example, and we copy and paste everything to our new class. All we have to do now is change the condition in the new class. So we can say data row like P, which means it starts with P. And then we say column tree has a value of less than 50. And that's our function created. To get it to run, it's simply a matter of changing the type to the name of our new class module. So we change the type to CLS compare P. Let's run our code and see what happens. You can see it brought back all the fruit that starts with P and that have sales less than 50. So this opens up a lot of possibilities 
As you can use any criteria that you like to filter the data, you could even implement regular expressions without too much effort. We can use the same compare function with the index of by function. As we saw, index of returns the first row with the matching criteria, whereas filter returns all the rows. Let's change the code here to use index of by function. The result of index of by function will return the row number to the row variable. Then we write out the row from the array using write rows to range, and we pass it the row parameter. We don't need any other changes as index of uses the same compare function that filter uses. When we run the code, you can see that it wrote out the first row that starts with P and that has sales less than 50. If you'd like to learn more about VBA arrays, then check out my playlist on arrays. Now don't forget to download the source code from the description below. And if you like this video, then please click on the like button. See you on the next video.